an appropriate anthem for these times. A bleak midwinter of frozen pay and bitter inflation has led to a season of strikes, from paramedics and posties, bus drivers to baggage handlers. It may not be a general strike, but across the country, millions of workers are heading into discontent this winter. The government has responded by threatening to make it harder to strike, by accusing union bosses of being dangerous militants. The unions say that away from the rhetoric, the government is unwilling to engage with them meaningfully. It seems as little prospect of resolution, and we could well be heading into an unhappy new year. The latest workers to announce a strike date, ambulance staff in England and Wales, including paramedics and control room workers in their dispute over pain. The military will be trained to drive ambulances to cover the action. They'll be adding to a hectic season of strikes in the countdown to Christmas. Ambulance workers will walk out on December 21st. They'll be joining nurses in England, Wales and Northern Ireland who take action on the 15th and 20th. If you're travelling by train, rail workers have announced four dates next week and another four starting on Christmas Eve, although these will affect engineering works. If you're hoping to post a parcel, Royal Mail workers walk out on six dates starting on Friday. Teachers in Scotland will strike. In England and Wales, they'll also ballot for possible action. Bus drivers in Sunderland, as well as parts of London, will be parking up for four days. And if that's enough to make you want to get away from it all, Heathrow Airport could be impacted as baggage handlers walk out for 72 hours. Are you all coordinating? Simple answer is no. Um, we don't decide what happens or when things happen. It's our members that decide what they want to do. Stuart Richards is a rep for the GMB union, whose members include ambulance workers. How do you feel about people who say people are worried? What if they have a fall? What if they need emergency help? The fact that this is the first strike in over 30 years gives an indication about what kind of respect they have for, for the job that they do. And it's the last resort. They really don't want to be taking strike action. What we've already agreed though with the trustees, we're going to sit down and work out how we can still provide life and limb cover, that emergency cover, just so that there is a fail safe there. Are you worried that you could lose public sympathy though, the longer these strikes go on? I think, I'm hoping that the, we, well, what we've seen so far is massive public support. We haven't seen anything that looks like the public has, has taken against the workers because the fact, of, the fact is that so many workers are in exactly the same boat. And it's that public goodwill at a time when so many are struggling that the unions are hoping on, in the face of criticism by some, including the hospitality sector, who'll face disruption at what traditionally is their busiest time. I don't think they should go on strike personally, but... You don't think they should go on strike? No, I, don't Why not? Think, I don't think people should. I wouldn't have ever gone on strike when I was at work. So. What did you used to do? I worked for the bank. What about the so, union's uh, argument that yeah, yeah. pay hasn't kept up with inflation? <laughs> people well. keep pushing for large wage increases. It's going to fuel inflation even more, isn't it? And that's going to affect everybody. How do you feel about everybody going on strike? I mean, they deserve it. They need their pay rises, working all through COVID and everything and not being given the money that they deserve. Have you got a sympathy for them going on strike? Yeah, at the end of the day, cost of living is going up, isn't it? So if, the, if your wages are going to stay the same or not, it, you know, people's wages haven't increased over 10 years, so you've got to do something, haven't you? Yeah, and we do. I would have sympathy for them, yeah, yeah. because at least they've got the option to strike sort of thing and, and maybe get what they, what they need out of it. There was little joy for firefighters today who held a rally and lobbied MPs in Westminster after rejecting a 5% pay offer they'll now be balloting over action. Potentially another sector on strike in a season for some not to be so jolly. Arshna Sonia will join me now is Matthew Taylor. He's the chief executive of the NHS Confederation, the membership body representing NHS leaders. Thanks for coming on the programme, Matthew. Um, if you were to get sick on the 21st of December, the day of that strike, the ambulance strike, the nurses are striking to you, what would you advise people to do? So if you have an emergency, you need to phone 999 and an ambulance will come to you because the trade unions have committed to providing emergency and critical care. So we are in discussion with the trade unions um, 
to make sure that we understand entirely the impact of that uh, action and what we can do to prepare patients. So if it's a nurse's action, for example, cancelling appointments so people don't turn up for appointments that don't take place. So look, this is a very difficult kind of balancing act, isn't it? On the one hand, the trade unions are committed to protecting life and limb. On the other hand, there'd be no point taking industrial action if it didn't have an impact. So right. the leaders that we represent, leaders in the health service, have to try to deal with this and try to minimise the harm for patients. I mean, you know, they will respond to life-threatening calls, but how do you tell the difference sometimes? It's not always obvious, is it? So, what might, so there might be someone who's not going to call for an ambulance, but they might end up dying because they should have taken that uh, option and they didn't because they were afraid to. Well, so we have skilled call handlers and, you know, we have a service which is designed to try to make the best assessment of what people need and we categorise those calls and so that will have to happen. But, you know, we need to urge people to err on the side of caution. If you think that you have a life-threatening emergency, then the emergency services will be there for you. Even if you have to wait for hours, even if no ambulance will come at the end of the, well, that call? Well, of course, this is the, the, the bigger issue here, which is that your package focused on pay. But as ambulance drivers, nurses, others will tell you this isn't just about pay. Um, it's about a service which is suffering yeah. from 130,000 vacancies in the NHS, from low morale, from uh, two years of COVID. And now workers in that gap which exists between the demands facing the health service and the capacity yeah. we've got. And it's important to say that, you know, even if there were no trade unions and even if there was no industrial action, we would still have a huge problem about how we recruit and how we retain sure. and how we motivate NHS staff. But we pride ourselves in this country on the, on the NHS. We clapped the NHS during the pandemic. How disgraceful, how embarrassing is it that we now live in a country where we're too afraid to be ill because we don't think we're going to get the care that we need? Well, I don't think it's a question of being too afraid to be ill. We know every day that we are not able to reach the targets that we have set for ambulance response times. We have people on waiting lists. But let's also remember that we have got rid of people who are waiting for two years for operation. We've made enormous progress towards getting to a maximum of 18 months waiting, that we are rolling out the COVID, the flu vaccine, that we're responding just now to the strep A a challenge with with children the health service is there and and many services like diagnostic services around cancer have returned to pre-covid levels but we have an aging population we have poor public health and we're in the middle of winter and these did, are very difficult times and even with the responsible the in... attitude the unions are showing towards right. them do you think the Sorry. army should be called in to help out the army will be called in if it's necessary in order to protect life and limb. We hope that working with the trade unions, we can avoid that situation occurring. And what's the solution here? The government basically giving the nurses and the ambulance drivers what they want? Well, we think we need to see flexibility from both sides. So, uh, this is a very gloomy situation, but there is some hope in the sense that the pay review body will report earlier next year. The government has at last committed to a proper workforce plan. Inflation may come down. So it may be that it's easier to go forward on these issues next year. So what we need is we need the government and we need the trade unions to try to find some basis for getting through the next few months, as, for example, they have done in Scotland. Who do you sympathise with more here, the nurses and the ambulance drivers or the government saying we haven't got the cash? You know, as a representative of employers in the NHS, it's important that I don't take sides in this. What I would say to both sides is to try to find a way forward because nobody wants to uh, harm uh, patients. I think everybody in the NHS, every leader I represent, mm. understands why staff are angry. Um, but at the same time, these, th these days of industrial action come on top of all the other challenges we're facing. Mm. Matthew Taylor, thank you very much indeed. OK, let's go to Fatima in Leeds. Fatima. Well, with me here in the studio is Deanne Ferguson. She's from the GMB union and was a Labour parliamentary candidate in 2019. And down the line from London is Kate Nichols, who's the chief executive for UK Hospitality. Welcome to you both, Kate Nichols. I'm going to come to you in just a moment. Um, Deanne Ferguson, how have we ended up in this situation where ambulance workers feel the need to go on strike? We've ended up in this situation with over a decade of Tory funding cuts, not just within the NHS, 
but in local government, which has then affected social care as well. So we're in a position now where our members have very much said that they've waited for this government to resolve the issues and the crisis within the NHS. But year on year, we have seen funding being decimated to frontline workers and to services within the community, which they feel now they cannot continue. And our members feel that they are simply striking now to save the service, which we all feel so proud to have. So we're in this situation now because the government have put our members and the workers of the NHS and the community who use the NHS in this position. Let's talk about the worries, though, that people will have. You will appreciate people will be saying, I'm really worried if I get ill. Say you have a fall or your parent or your grandparent has a fall and you call up for an ambulance and, and it's not considered life-threatening. That could end up really serious, couldn't it? It absolutely can. And just to make very clear to viewers, this is already happening now. Patient safety is already at risk now. A couple of weeks back, we went to visit some of our members during the industrial action ballot. An elderly patient had been on the floor for seven hours before an ambulance could go and, and respond to the 999 call because they were waiting outside of Scarborough Hospital in a queue for hours. But they, they had to then be cohorted and that patient was still seven hours later when we went to visit the hospital waiting to be triaged from the back of an ambulance. So for 14 hours, an elderly patient, and this is just one example, yeah. we've got hundreds of thousands of these examples. And I know place. GMB represents thousands of people and I'm sure they yeah. care deeply about patients. So is it the right time to be taking strike action? I mean, Steve Barclay, the health secretary, says that union demands are simply not affordable. Union demands are on much more than patients. Obviously, we need to have a discussion about pay. It's not right that we've got frontline care workers who are saving lives during the day and then using food banks on a night. It's not right that whilst they're in the back of an ambulance trying to treat a patient, they're then wondering how they're going to pay the gas and electric bill when that comes in at the end of the month. Steve Barclay needs to do what he says on Twitter. He needs to actually meet with our union representatives and our members and listen to the concerns, which are our members need a decent pay rise in order for them to live but we also need to face this, the crisis within social care without the two being looked at together we won't solve the problem within the NHS and he need, he has got the power to avoid these strikes on the 21st of and the 28th of December but I beg to all of the all of the public please point your finger of blame at this government because they okay. are the ones that can stop this dispute okay let's just turn to Kate Nichols I mean Kate Nichols I know your concern will be much more about the rail strikes and the impact that it will have on the businesses that you represent. But do you have some sympathy for public sector workers like Diane who are talking about the, the difficulties they're facing? Well, of course, we have un a sympathy and understanding about all the challenges that workers are facing across the sectors of the economy, both public sector and private sector. Clearly, from my perspective, I'm concerned about the workers in hospitality who can't get to work, who can't have uh, shifts that were scheduled in for the busiest trading week, would have had extra hours when they're going to work towards Christmas because events are being cancelled because of the rail strikes. So clearly we have sympathy and understanding, but it's about making sure that workers across all industrial sectors are protected and we don't have workers in one sector, particularly hospitality, that are being used and have seen collateral damage as a result of a strike action. This will be the third Christmas in a row that hospitality will really struggle then. This is why it is so devastating. These strikes that are coming next week and, and we're seeing knock-on effects through cancellations over Christmas into the new year, the hit on consumer confidence because people can't plan. This is coming at our busiest trading period. We lost Christmas for the last two years. Christmas normally in a good year. We have our golden quarter between Halloween and New Year's Eve. Hospitality generates 30 to 40 percent of its profits. It's vital for those businesses to get through the rest of the year. And that's when they really get the much needed cash in the till after two years of not really trading and trading below losses, carrying heavy debts. This Christmas was vital for the survival of many businesses in our sector. One in three have no cash reserves, half are not breaking even. So to lose this busiest trading week of the year, the busy trading weekend before Christmas, absolutely devastating for workers and businesses in the sector. We estimate the sector is going to lose 1.5 billion in revenue, which is almost as big as the Omicron impact this time last year. So you've heard what the union leaders have to say and you've probably heard what the government has to say about this ongoing situation around strikes. 
who do you think needs to kind of bend a little here? I think you need to have compromise on all sides. We need the government, the unions and the employers in the case of the rail strikes to be coming to the table. Uh, we need the government to facilitate that dialogue and negotiations and to double down on encouraging all parties to, to provide some compromise to get these strikes suspended so that we don't have real damage to the hospitality sector, the third largest employer in the UK and a sector that generates more revenue than automotive, aerospace and pharmaceuticals put together at the moment. We are facing collateral damage and we need to make sure the businesses in the sector are protected, but also that we need to double down and get a real resolution on a strike that has dragged over the course of the summer and early part of this year, has really dragged on revenues and, and recovery for the sector as a whole. OK. Um, Dion Ferguson, very briefly, Mick Lynch from the RMT union has talked about coordinating between unions, essentially some form of informal general strike. Do you see that happening? I think what I see happening is that I need to support the members across the ambulance workers and the NHS. We are talking to other unions that represent health workers, um, but with regards to other unions' disputes, I can't really make a comment on that. We will support our, our sister unions in action that, that their members vote to take. I must make that point. Fair enough. Um, and can I just ask you briefly, I mean, you were a Labour candidate. Keir Starmer has banned members of the Shadow Cabinet from appearing on picket lines to support you. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean... Um, if I was a Labour MP, I would be standing on a picket line with, with the workers. Um, it's who I am. I'm a trade union official, but it's the workers' strikes and ultimately it's the workers that will vote either party back into government in, in 2024. And I think all leaders need to remember that. All right. Dianne Ferguson and Kate Nichols, thank you very much.